Hey everyone, welcome to my first video. Today I want to show you how I made my faux fur houndstooth coat that was inspired by Chanel and worn by Cara Delevingne on the runway, and most recently seen on Cardi B. The first thing I did was take my measurements, my neck circumference, my chest, my shoulder to shoulder across the back, and the desired length of my coat starting from the high shoulder point. Once I had those measurements, I was able to start drafting my pattern. I would consider this coat to be fairly simple to draft, so you'll notice that I'm not using any blocks or patterns to create this pattern. All I'm doing is taking the measurements that I have and plotting all of those points on my paper. I then add a half inch seam allowance all around the pattern pieces. Except at the hem, I add an inch and a half. So here I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to have a notched collar or a shawl collar. I actually started drafting the notched collar, and then halfway through I decided the coat might be cuter with just a shawl collar, so I did that instead. Once I finished drafting the collar, I added seam allowance and started cutting my pattern out. Once the front and back coat patterns were done, I had to measure the armhole so I can draft the sleeve pattern. I then measured my bicep, my elbow, and my wrist, and I wrote those measurements down. And with those measurements, I was able to plot the points on my paper and create a sleeve pattern. I also extended the sleeve length to include my facing so that I didn't have to sew that or cut that out with a separate piece. Then it came time to cut the fabric. I found this houndstooth fabric before I even knew Chanel had done this coat, and it just turned out that great minds think alike. Now here you'll notice from the fold in the fabric, I swung the bottom of the center back away from the fold about three inches. This allows for a little bit of a swing and more movement in the coat. Cutting faux fur is usually really messy. Um, because I was in a rush that day, I used scissors instead of an X-Acto knife, which is what I would normally use. That way you're cutting just the ground of the fabric and not the fur itself. Did I mention that I finished this coat pattern, cutting, and sewing in under four hours? Instead of making a separate front collar facing and a back neck facing, I just cut it out of my existing front and back pattern pieces, and once I put the pattern on the fabric, I just added seam allowance and cut straight through. <laughs> Having a little Dyson vacuum cleaner like this is super handy when you're making a mess. Now it's time to cut the lining. I picked up this black cashew lining, which is a satin lining backed in flannel. It's really good at keeping you warm in the winter and keeping the wind out. After I finished cutting the lining pieces, I cut out fusing for my front collar facing and my back neck facing. Time to sew. I started by joining my side seams first. Sometimes it's challenging sewing the right sides of fur together because they tend to slip, so just make sure you use pins if you need to to hold your fabric together. Once I'd sewn the seams and the sleeves together, I joined them at the armhole. Now it's time to start sewing the lining. I started with the side seams just like I did with the fur, and then I'm going to do the shoulders. So here I'm testing a scrap piece of fur to see if the iron will melt it or damage it in some kind of way. Once I was sure that the iron wouldn't damage the fur, I went ahead and fused the interfacing to the front collar facings and the back neck facing. 
I also then went ahead and pressed all of my seams open. Then it came time to join my facing to the lining. This can sometimes be a little bit tricky if you're working with a satin lining and fur because the two together tend to slip. So do your best to stabilize the fabric as you're sewing the two pieces together by using pins or any other tools that you find helpful. So right now I'm joining my lining that's already connected to my facings and I'm attaching it to the self, which is the fur. From there, I did an understitch on the fur on the inside of the coat. So here, all I'm doing now is attaching the sleeve opening of the self to the sleeve opening of the lining. Once the sleeves were done, I started working on the hem. I also didn't worry about surging the raw edges of the fabric because I didn't think they'd fray. The coat was mostly clean finished anyway. Now what I'm doing here is top stitching the hem of my lining and then the hem of my faux fur. Because the stitches on the right side of the fur tend to be visible, I made sure to take a pin and pull the fur out that was being held under those stitches. Once the coat was done, it was time to put it on and clean up my mess. Here's a photo of me wearing the finished coat that I wore to a party that night. This is the type of coat that you can pair with a chic outfit for a dressed up look, and you can also pair it with a hoodie pair of jeans for a more casual dress down look. It's really versatile and it's super cozy. Feels like I'm wearing a blanket every time I put it on. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment below. Please also feel free to subscribe and follow me on IG at Mr. Underscore Ponil and at Christopher Ponil. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.